What's up everybody, a Sparrow with a Gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineers Inspiration series. We're starting things off today with the Anvil Carrick, I think I'm saying that right, Expedition. And I'm a little bit confused on the design of the ship in terms of, from reading the description, it sounds like it's, it's probably a Star Citizen ship that's being recreated in Space Engineers, but I wasn't quite clear on that if it was just an original design or not, but as far as I can tell, I believe it's a, a Star Citizen design, but it looks pretty cool. I do like the, the look of it a lot. It's got this cool bridge, first off, which we all know how much I like suspended glass bridge type stuff, so I'm curious to see how that looks from the inside, but it looks pretty cool. There's also this, which is a neat idea. It's a ground hanger. But then I noticed they have um, hangar doors here to extend the ramp, which is kind of a neat idea. Um, and it didn't come with the blueprint, but there is another ship by the same builder that is, I believe, designed to fit in here, I think. I'm pretty sure this is the hangar area, although I don't see a connector or anything, so I could be wrong. But per the screenshots and stuff, that's kind of where it looks like it would go. And I think I have it spun around correctly because the the bridge and stuff is correctly oriented. What is this? This looks interesting. I wonder why there's catwalks surrounding this. Can I get close enough to... Oh! Every time I almost have it, it goes away. Come on. What are you? So that's a piston, it looks like. I wonder if that's part of the landing gears or something. That's interesting. I've never seen it done like that. But it looks pretty cool. It's designed as an exploration type ship. As you can tell, there's not a whole lot of weaponry on it. Um, but it's kind of a self-sustaining uh, ship is the idea, apparently, which is pretty cool. Um, it seems like there's a good amount of entrances, thankfully. I'm just letting her out, but whatever. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Oh, there's landing gears holding that. What is that for? Hmm. Can this separate or something? What do we got here? Drone airlock. Oh, okay. Drone airlock. Maglock. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this bottom section a drone? Oh, if it is, this ship just got a whole lot cooler. Okay, let's close this just to make sure we don't mess anything up there. I'm very curious about that aspect of this ship now. <laughs> okay, this is kind of a neat idea, too. Um, I've talked before about how the graded catwalks are cool looking because you can kind of see underneath them. But this is a neat idea of putting interior walls underneath on the side, so it almost looks like piping and stuff. That's a really cool idea. It's hard to see because the lights seem to wash it out, but I really like that. I'll have to remember that. Because that is a really nice, easy touch that it wouldn't be difficult to do, but it would add a little bit more... Um, cool aspect to the the catwalk areas. And this is kind of neat. I don't know what it's for. These are just saying door. We've got conveyors. Maybe escape pods? Possibly? Okay, so I'm a big fan of this bridge so far. I like the suspended um, area where you can walk out over the glass. I like the field of view because of the glass. I mean, I've said before that I really like glass stuff, but that's predominantly why I like glass bridges, is because it gives you a very high field of view where you can look all around and kind of see. You're not like, um, kind of, what's the, what's the term I'm looking for? You don't have blinders on, essentially, when you're trying to fly. So that's a cool idea. I like that the screens up here are giving you your horizon line and all that stuff. It's not like, um, up in your face. No faction found. Yeah, this has a really good sight line. 
That's cool. I like it. I also like the use of the stairs here because it kind of funnels you to the proper door, but I also like that because it's sitting the way it is, it almost kind of gives a lit wall. Almost like an Imperial from Star Wars kind of setup. It's pretty cool. Got a lot brighter all of a sudden. Um, this, I'm gonna say is Captain's Quarters. Because that's about all I can think of why that would be there. Oh, that's kind of neat. We got this like downward view to the uh, like a break room or something. Kind of cool. Goes down here. Ooh. I don't know what this is for, but it's very well lit. Maybe a crew quarters? Because it seems like we've got some bunks. So I'm gonna say crew quarters on that one. Uh, what is this? Piston 4. Turn on. Okay. Oh, it's like an elevator. Toggle block on reverse. Cool. Okay. So they use blast block. Now I'm kind of surprised this actually works because there's blast bo block. I can never say that right. On three sides. But then there's an O2H2 generator, which I think... Oh, it's because that's not in that block space, I guess. It's kind of cool. Where does it go? This keeps going down. This is kind of one of those ships where, um, like I've said before, where it's like it ends up being a lot larger on the inside than I thought it was going to be. Um, I, I don't know what these are for. I'm going to say... I would say maybe like lockers or decomp showers or something if you were like worried about biohazard. But they have the frost pack or frostbite doors, so they should have been able to have lockers and showers. So I'm not sure. That might just be a decorative looks cool thing. Um, I could be crazy, but I thought these doors were closed before. Am I crazy? So we've got... Oh, that could be dangerous. We've got a small access point here to what looks like our cargo containers. That's cool. And then this is a very, very snug airlock. Holy crap. I didn't know you could use the frostbite doors that way, though. That's cool. Like, in terms of space conservation. That's like, I know it's technically two blocks, but that really wouldn't feel like two blocks. That's pretty cool. Got some lockers over here. I am a little confused as to, as to why all these conveyor, or these passages are here. I'm kind of leaning towards it may just be for preferred style. Like it might just be something that, um, I'm also- I guess you turn the block off if you want a mid-level floor- Ooh, what is this? What is this? We have a projector room with an, a cool ambient vibe, cool spotlights, batteries. Interesting. I feel like I've seen something like this room done before in a previous build a long time ago, though. It wasn't recent. Where does all this go? Okay, this is the upper observation area of that hangar. That's cool. I am still kind of curious about the whole drone thing. I'm guessing this leads to the same. Yeah, that's going to be kind of the same. Alright, so let's test out my theory here. Yeah, okay, so you just turn it off if you're mid-floor. That's cool. That is a really simple elevator gets the job done, but you wouldn't have to do a whole lot of crazy, wonky stuff. Okay, we're back here again. I didn't really see where... Oh, okay. So this is the main off point for that piston. Okay, that's cool. Is there anything around this way that's different? Probably not. So I think we've seen kind of everything? What goes this way? Oh, maybe not. Definitely not. 
Okay, we've got something here. What is this? Oh, okay, so this is like a turret control for... Where, where is this? That's one of the landing gears. Is this on the side? Yeah, okay, it's the side pod there. Cool. I've only recently been reminded that you can actually use and manually control... Um, what is this? The turrets and stuff. What is all of this? Besides looking really cool. I guess this is kind of your engineering area. I like the mood lighting. I love I love the I, I have a hard time like when I build stuff myself balancing the functionality of I want it to be well lit enough that I can see what I'm doing, but also kinda of have that mood lighting, that atmosphere. Okay, so I think we've kind of explored everything in the better part of the ship. So I wanna check and figure out how that drone thing works. Maybe we'll try and use this control down here. Okay, so drone airlock. Oh, I I'm 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 dumb. Okay. This is probably not going to be what I thought it was. Uh, all that's closed, so unlock and off. So if I unlock them, what happens? Let's turn switch or auto lock. Is that switch or auto? yeah, that's auto lock. And then unlock. Now what? Okay, that's holding that, but I don't see. Are there merge blocks on here? No, there aren't. Or at least not showing. Interesting. So I'm not really sure what that is for. At all. I don't really have any idea what that's for. Um, the other thing is I realize when it says drones, I think that's maybe like a docking bay or something to that effect. Um, where you can dock a drone, maybe? Because, I don't know, but then I looked outside and there's no connectors, so I'm very confused by some of that. Though, I just now, just now, remember this is designed off of a, I think it's designed off of a Star Citizen, so they may be recreating certain functionality that isn't there in Space Engineers. That's probably a big portion of it, is doing kind of a recreation so it has a drone thing, but maybe you don't have that in the game. So, rotor to reverse, I'm guessing this is for the landing bay. Oh yeah, where was the landing bay? We didn't see that. Did we? I don't think we went in there. Alright, hold up. I'm gonna jump outside real quick. If I can find a exterior door. Oh, I'm down on the lower levels. I was like, wait a minute, wasn't it right here? I'm... Everybody, you, you guys know me by now, I get lost in ships all the time. Okay, let's just pop out here real quick. I'm sure there's another easier door. I just remembered this one. I don't think we came in here. So where does this connect up? Alright, we've got a cafe type area there. Oh, this is this spot. Okay, so we, just, we never went back down this hallway. Got it. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and it has those expansions there. I noticed the controls said expansion, so that's probably what that's for. That's really cool. I do think there was one on this side. There it is. So I did remember that there was another door. I just couldn't remember where it came in at. That would actually have been super convenient, but whatever. Nope. <laughs> I'm back where I started from. This is where I wanted. Okay. I was kind of used to ships being symmetrical, that they have the same thing on both sides, so I wasn't realizing that that would have been an elevator and not an airlock. Okay, so we did that. This does apparently have atmospheric thrusters, so it can transfer landing rotors. Landing rotors. Oh. 
Well, that's convenient. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, landing gear, Gatling turrets, batteries, hydrogen thrusters, yada yada yada, lights, escape doors. Let me guess the top. Can't really zoom in on them from here, but it looks like their lights are changing, so that's those top doors. Uh, jump drives, jump drives, and that does about most everything else. Cool. So in terms of moving, it feels like a fighter. It actually moves pretty darn quick. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie. So I actually like the ship overall. It's a little bit disorienting in terms of having not all of the internals be symmetrical on both sides, that sometimes I would go left when I'd end up in a wrong room or something thinking that it would, you know, match. But other than that, um, it's actually really cool, and especially being based off of an existing ship design, if it was, um, then I think it was done really well. So with that, we're going to wrap this one up. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so next we have the Grey Wolf. I think that's the name. I, there's there's other acronym stuff to it, but I decided I wasn't going to try and do that. I think it's the C-E-U -E or something. Anyway, um, this is a missile frigate, which always sounds fun, and it's got a lot of custom stuff it looked like on it, at least in the workshop file anyway. It had some custom targeting missiles and whatnot, which is pretty cool. Like this stuff. Ooh, what is this? This is a very destructive looking turret, <laughs> so that's kind of cool. I've always liked this kind of stuff too, where you take um, like the rotors and fixed weapons and basically turn them into turrets and things. I think that's kind of neat because you can actually make them a bit more uh, firepower focused, but also the grids and stuff of how much the regular ones take up. You could kind of control it a bit more with the fixed ones. I really like the design of the ship, though, overall. Um, I like these kind of pod looks on the wings, where you have like the full fuselage wing, but then you have like kind of the pods for the thrusters. It's kind of a neat idea. And I really like the bladed look on the back here. It's kind of one of those I'm not sure in space if it would really serve a purpose in terms of like aerodynamics and things because there's no air, but it looks really cool. I really like that. Um, and I like this too, these like border type pod things over or around a thruster area. I think that's pretty cool. Now, one complaint I might have about this ship is the ease of detection for an entrance. Yeah. Uh, that's that's one thing that um, <clears throat> I feel could be easy. I mean, it's right here, and we all knew it, but it's just one of those, it, it could be a little more clearly marked for some of those people out there. Not me, but some people that have a hard time finding doors and whatnot, so. Um, I actually really like this entrance, though. This is kind of cool. You've got a glass viewing area and doors on both sides with lights that are controlled for, I'm, I'm guessing that's running off of a script, but it's still cool that they like blink and turn red. That's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, we've got one going this way, and then we've got a ladder going this way. What's down here? We have a survival kit. I've really grown to like this idea too, of you have your walkway, and then you've got stuff, mechanical, whatever it may be, but then it's covered by glass. I think it's a cool touch that you can see it and in an emergency, you could, you know, grind down the windows and repair it, whatever. I mean, not repair it. Yeah, repair it. <laughs> I did say what I meant. Um, so that's pretty cool. I don't know where that goes. Where's this going? Ooh! Ooh! This is a cool server room type setup. Wow. Holy crap, there's a lot of scripts going on here. I believe my memory serves. I saw Whiplash on the build for this. I don't know if that meant that they were just using the scripts, um, or if that meant that he was actually part of the build. If, if so, this makes total sense. Because <laughs> there's a lot of information going on here. And I'm not sure, but I think I might have accidentally pushed that button to arm the missile system. 
Is there a disarm for the missile? Oh, there is. Uh, nine. I'm just gonna click that, just on the off chance. So, well, actually, you know what, while we're here, let's just mess around with it. Um, build missiles 1 through 8, 9 through 16, view targeting camera, lock on and off, precision mode, fire missile, fire 4 missiles, disarm, toolbar 2 is jump drive and cameras, and then point defense. Oh, okay, that's cool. So, camera. Okay. We've got arm, build 1 through 8, 9 through 16, missile control. Uh, let's see what that says. That has more clear directions here. Precision mode and fire is 5 and 6. No, lock on in precision mode. And then fire 7, 8 is fire 4, 9 is disarm. Okay, so we'll arm it. Um, we'll build 1 through 8, I guess. Target. Now, I don't know how the lock-on thing works. Let's just try lock-on there and then fire. Did it work? What, what are we beeping about? Do not fire at maximum speed. Firing is temporarily disabled when reloading. Use jump drives to avoid enemy missiles. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even think about. I didn't even think about that. Um. All right, let's try the other mode. And then fire. Is it because the doors are? Cl oh no, they're open. They're open now. Okay. I'm guessing it might be because I don't have a target, so we're just going to go ahead and disarm the system. Without a target, it may not fire. And it's beeping at me, which concerns me. So, hopefully the ship doesn't blow up. But, you know, I could have just set it to fire and then close the doors and it's just going to explode. Who knows? Um, this is pretty cool, though. I like this setup of... I, I like a lot of my engineering things. I always like it when they're exposed, but it's organized, you know? Like, it's not just chaos. It actually has a, a method to the madness. Um, but it looks cool, you know what I mean? So here's our missile bays. I don't really know why they weren't fire. I'm really gonna err on the side of without a target, they won't fire. That's what I'm gonna go with, because everything else looks like it's working fine. Um, they're cool little missiles, too. I have no- I have no earthly idea how they got the scripts for these to work, where the missiles know where they are and fly and target something. Like, I can do scripts for inventory management, power control, give you readouts on your ship fairly simply. Um, but the guidance system stuff that some people have come up with and thing, I just- I don't even- I don't even know how they- I don't know enough about the game's internal mechanics in terms of GPS and coordinates and sensors, and I don't know what they're using to control that. But it's like the PAM script is another one of knowing where your base is and to return and all that stuff. It's like, I don't even know how they, what blocks they're accessing and how they figured out a way to do that. It's insane. It's really cool. Really, really cool. But. I would love to hear kind of the the logical steps behind it as to what it's actually doing, um, because it, there's some things where people have even asked me sometimes on because I've done programming series in the in the past, which I do intend to redo that. By the way, I've said it before, but it's still in my backlog of things to do um, to to re revamp the programming series so that it's more. Uh, concise, clean, and uh, more updated information and more thorough kind of thing. But, uh, but yeah, it's like, I, because of that, I've even had people go, how would I do this? And some things I can help them with, and then there's other things where uh, people are like, you know, um, could I do this? Is this doable? And I'm kind of like, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> I say I don't think so, but then I see some some of the stuff like what M Master and Whiplash have done, and I'm like, I don't know, maybe, you know. 
And the more I think about it, the more I'm realizing I think this may be the bridge? Because I can't find a bridge anywhere. So I'm going to say that this is the bridge. Especially since this has also jump drive controls and whatnot. I really don't know why it's beeping, but... Um, let's try... Whoa! Wow, this moves really fast. This accelerates super quick with, you, with those hydrogen thrusters on. Wow. This is actually, with the missile firepower and stuff it has on it, this is a force to be reckoned with. It turns a little slower compared to its acceleration, but in terms of get up and go, this could get around on you pretty quick and fire some rockets at you, so you'd have to watch out for this thing. This could definitely be a warship to look out for. Um, but I think that's going to do it for this one, so let's move on to the last one. Alright, and last but not least, we have the USS P. Onyx, which I believe is yet again another missile-type frigate, but it's got some really cool ideas. First off, I really kind of like the obvious inspiration from an, like an older, traditional battleship kind of thing, as opposed to some of the sci-fi inspirations we see a lot of. Um, you can tell kind of with the front bow here and the bridge over there, it kind of looks like a, an older like ocean battleship that we have now kind of thing, or had a long time ago. Um, so I really like that, that it has this kind of old school naval feel to it rather than necessarily feeling quite as space ship-ish, spacey. It's not as spaced out essentially is what I'm saying. Um, and uh, so I really like that aspect of it. I think that makes it kind of unique compared to a lot of the the things that we have. But the other thing that I think is really freaking cool are these. And they look like just kind of doors, but because they're going kind of with this more traditional, realistic look on a Navy ship or something, you've got these actual missile bay doors, which I think is awesome. Like you'll see in submarines and, and destroyers and stuff where the uh, the missile bay doors will open and the missiles launch out. I'm like, that's so cool that they actually gave it launch bay doors kind of thing. It's really neat. Um, and there's also this cool, I'm guessing, maintenance style access walkway here that if you needed to, you could get up and repair them. Or manually. I'm guessing that's what the buttons are for, even though it doesn't look like they're set up. It's probably eventually for like a manual override if you needed it, which is pretty cool. I like it a lot. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty neat. I definitely like the bridge thing too. It has that very battleship-esque feel. Oh, there's actually a lower area here too. That's interesting. Um, I also like that uh, regardless of whether or not there may be some hidden... I don't think there's enough room to have hidden hydrogen thrusters and stuff, but I like the look of that gunmetal gray with the, with the bright blue uh, thrusters. I think that works really well. Looks really cool. Um, Alright, so this looks like as good a spot as any to enter. Um, I'm guessing this is the main bridge, because it kind of looks like it. So we're going to leave that for now and go explore about the rest of the ship. I wonder, I wonder if some of that sound effect is left on on purpose, just so it sounds more like an engine room kind of thing. Oh, it's actually the hydrogen engine. Okay. That's a cool effect. Um, this is probably going to be that maintenance area that we just saw. Yep, so we don't really need to check that out. Okay, we got a survival kit there. It's all fairly compact in here as far as everything's kind of got a place type of thing. And this is the lower section here, which we've got, I'm guessing, bunks. And what are these for? Are they really doing anything, or is this just... I guess they're just secondary areas. And then this is another airlock. So surprisingly, the ship looks a little bit bigger on the outside, but it actually doesn't seem to have too much interior space to move around and whatnot. I'm guessing like the bunk and cryo chambers and things are kind of serving as the uh, crew quarters and whatnot. So there is that. We might need to keep in mind that weapon salvo button. That looked fun. 
Okay, so from here we have phys like manual fixed rocket launchers, which it looks like are out the... Oh, they're set for a script. That's cool. <laughs> that is so cool. So those are out kind of the nacelle areas. We've got front aiming raycast. Missile raycast front... Oh, mast. Okay. And then... I'm not sure what these are all for, because they all kind of seem to be saying the same thing, but they're all aiming cameras. Jump drive designators. Connection ports. Missile recast front. Um, missile F FCS. I don't know... It had a breakdown in the description, but I figured I could just read them here, but they are all kind of labeled the same way, so I'm guessing these are different controls. Not really sure which each one does. Uh, missile welders, another control, designators, and more controls that I don't know what they do. Um, that's my bad. It's in the description, I just didn't read it. Um, so I'm guessing each one of these is different, like, fire buttons and different... So we're gonna push buttons and see what happens. I'm gonna just kind of follow the sequence and hope that we don't blow up the ship. Uh, so we have one there, one there, one there. Okay. So let's stick with this one. Just keep it simple. And let's just hit the second button and kind of see what happens. I'm guessing that it could be like an open door or get them built. Stuff like that. Not really sure. I don't see too much happening. So let's try another one. I'm wondering if there's going to be one for designate a target or not. I should probably read the description thing, but I'm just kind of curious what happens if I just push all these buttons. I'm probably messing a lot of things up, though. Um, I wonder if there's... Missiles. I was going to say, I wonder if there is a layout kind of like the um, the PAM script. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Set up successful, allow guidance modes, semi... So it's probably... These are probably some of the controls we're using as guidance modes. It's probably why there's not a lot happening. Um, I'm actually going to go out on a limb and say that's probably, probably what all three of these do. Um... I'm kind of just keeping an eye on the missile bay doors, because I'm just waiting for them to open. But... I'm not actually seeing a lot happening. So, I'm not sure. Let me take a quick gander at the description, and then I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I'm hoping that I got this right, but essentially... Um, yeah, that's what I was doing. Like, these are prep-type um, settings for... Um, the, the lock-on, lock-off, switch mode, stuff like that. Um, this is actually the fire button, but I didn't realize that... Where is it? These are the missile doors, so we need to open those pretty much before we do anything else. Um, there we go. So now they're actually open. And I think I have it set to lock off, so we'll see if they'll fire without it. They don't seem to be. But again, it's hard because a lot of the scripts are based on targeting. And while I can move the, the thing around and then tell it to lock on, if it's actually looking for a, a ship or something, it doesn't really have anything to fire on. So unfortunately, I don't think we can really test that very well. But everything else is really neat about the ship. And from what I've seen in the description and the screenshots and everything like that, looks really cool. And this thing moves like crazy. Holy crap. It accelerates and turns a lot faster than I expected. Especially with just looking like it's powered on ion engines. So that's pretty, pretty intense. And I absolutely love these missile bay doors, though. Can't get enough of that. So anyways, I think we're going to wrap things up here for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.